Are you guys ready for Logan? Yeah. So you all know him from Big Time Rush. He is the one, the only, Logan Anderson. <laughs> Uh, oh, no. oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. You've been to a few. 
<laughs> Did you have a favorite? Because you went to what? How many shows was it? Twenty. <laughs> Best show. Toronto was a very cool show. So that was done at Drake's uh, place called History, and uh, so there was a lot of Drake memorabilia on the on the wall. So that was cool, and it was it was very much like a rock show. It was like a very small club show, and we just we went for it. We didn't have a problem. You decided to crowd. I did crowd surf. That's right. That's right. I might do it tonight. I don't know. <laughs> So one of the things that, you know, when I was preparing for chatting with you, I wanted to do a little bit of research, kind of get some ideas on like what you've had to overcome during your career. Chris is obsessed with me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, no. Yes, you had to do some research. We did some research. Though. You know, I don't want to say Yeah, we did. That's fine. Yeah. Talk a lot of hockey. Talk a lot of hockey. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So during the, I want to talk a little bit time rushing with you too, the show, right? So I know that during the audition process, I don't know if, if the fans all know this, but it took roughly two years for you to go through that audition. Well, we process. know that. Long time. We long know time. that. Long time. During that time, you weren't allowed to audition for any other roles. You were stuck. Yeah, it really? was actually, it was pretty rough. <laughs> first moving out to LA, it was you couldn't really get any type of normal job and. The auditions are kind of what kept the money coming in and being able to, to, to book other things. So, um, yeah, that was an interesting. That was an interesting part of uh, the history. A lot of cup ramen, a lot of noodles. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it was definitely really, 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 really rough. What was it about Big Time Rush that made you feel like two years of an almost exclusive audition process was going to be worth it to to eventually be on that project? That that's tough to say. I think because I. I remember when I first auditioned for the show, I was like, it was really weird. It was in some small hotel room and it, there was only a couple people in there filming and it was odd questions they asked. I remember calling my agent saying like, don't ever send me out for anything like this. <laughs> Cut to booking the show and of course I, you know, give her all the credit. But um, no, I was, I was gonna say, it, it really wasn't one of those things that I knew how it was gonna turn out. I mean, even whenever they had the first audition was called, it was called the Untitled Boy Band Project. And I was like, oh, hell no. <laughs> I was like, what is this? It's not the music I listen to. It's not, it's not what I did. But, uh, you know, there was something really fantastic about the camaraderie with having everyone there. And I think after meeting James, um, I felt a little bit more. <laughs> We were the first two from the very beginning and kind of kept on going through. So James, James made that uh, whole process a lot more comfortable and tried to reassure me um, that it was all going to be okay. Um, and then I think as people started finally in, when we found Carlos, that was another big moment for us. And then, uh, and then we found Kendall. So that was, that was really cool. Now we're just a pretty happy family. I know you mentioned that a lot of the, I think you mentioned like some of the boy band music isn't traditionally what you listen to. What is some of the music that you, you do go for? What's on, what's well, on you know, that's, 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 what I can't for? say that because I grew up on NSYNC and Backstreet. Just, <laughs> <laughs> so, I did love it, but I listened to a whole array of different music. I mean, I don't know, my dad, whenever we were on the way to school in the car, we listened to Eagles and Queen and B.B. Yeah. Yeah. King and Eric Clapton and, I mean, ABBA. I mean, yeah. it's really yeah. 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 yeah, that's right. I said ABBA. <laughs> so, I mean, we, I listen to everything under the sun. I try to get my hands on as much music as possible. I think the fans in the room will agree with me that some of the music that we all love to listen to would be your music. Wow! Yeah. I think this is a good segue. Are we going to do that? Are we doing this? We can do it. Absolutely not. Like, I told you that confidence. <laughs> I was like, I'm not gonna sing. Um, yeah, let's do it. Let's bring out Dustin Bell. And then come back. And then come back. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have a special guest, Chris. <laughs> Tonight. <laughs> but the question that I wanted to ask you is, you know, um, 
Talk about some of the differences between you know singing when you're on the show, right, you're recording episodes, versus when you're doing songs live. How do you feel like you feed off of the crowd's energy that makes things different when you're performing live versus maybe in front the of a TV show? studio? I don't know, yeah, it's been a while from the show. I mean, maybe you have to get the difference between being in the studio, which I love studio work. Classically, it's kind of like my safe place. You can explore, you can do all the fun things in the studio. Um, and it's kind of like a, a puzzle. You keep on going back and forth to find the right lyrics, you find the right melody, so everything kind of makes sense. But the one thing that you don't get from the live shows is just that complete, pure, raw energy. And uh, I met Elton John one time at one of his Oscar parties, and he said that if you have the if you have the ability to sing live, it's the most important thing you can do as an artist because that type of connection with your fans and the type of story that you're able to tell live as opposed to a recorded version, um, there's not like a word for it. They, there's not like a, I feel like a word in the English language that kind of sums up that feeling. It's something that's pure magic. So, yeah, <laughs> pretty much hanging out with you, but that's what. That's what Yeah. What, was that, what was that like meeting Elton John? Is that like a starstruck Incredible. moment for you? Absolutely, yeah, 100%. Yeah, he came up and then he squeezed my cheek like this. <laughs> Both of them actually, and I was like, oh my gosh. What is that? And, like, and we got to chat for a little bit and, and had, a, had a nice picture. And that was actually prior to me um, recording Rocket Man. Yeah. Um, so I wish that would happen at the right time. But I like to think that maybe that first intro was uh, a way for him to kind of uh, agree to sign off on, yeah. on that. So. So other than maybe Elton John, if you could collaborate with any artist, dead or alive, who's the one person that if you could collab on a song with, who are you picking? I hate these questions. So <laughs> I don't know. There's so there's so many people. We were listening to Queen uh, on the way over here, so Freddie Mercury would be. I mean, come on. I don't like to say much about that except for just incredible. It's an obvious choice. Also, did we like that movie? Did you guys like Bohemian Rhapsody? Yeah. That would be cool too. There was a time that we went to a some type of industry party in Nashville, and we thought it would be a good idea to bring fireworks oh, for some reason. And um, Taylor was there, and we were like, I know, I know, safe. Uh, we put those things off, and one of them, quite near, just hit her, and um, we're, we are no luck. It didn't. It didn't. I'm just saying it was really, it was really close because they were all there. That one of them fell, went the wrong way. It was a whole, it was a whole uh, thing. So we, so I'm not sure how, how much we're gonna be uh, collaborating, but you never know. Right? You never know. So, and I know you mentioned a little bit of, of this conversation with Elton John. He's kind of giving you advice: perform live, be be yeah. there for your fans. Throughout your career. Who, who was, who is maybe your biggest inspiration? Who's been your role model as you progress through your musical career? Uh, I don't, it's tough for the role model. I think it's a, a lot of the friends I work with are so talented. We've, we've met so many people, so many awesome producers. Um, Ryan Tedder was a really cool person to meet. That was awesome. A lot, a lot of knowledge and um, I think really kind of is he's great in the studio. He's he's very he's very free when it comes to that. So it's great to watch him. Um, Snoop Dogg was obviously. Yeah. Yeah. I just read something that says when Snoop Dogg turns sixty, he'll be four twenty in dog years. Uh, you know what? I I don't know if I have like a role model. I think my my mom is like my biggest role model. Um, and yeah, I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. I do. I'm a, I'm a mom. So. so there it is, guys, okay? Now you know. Uh, but yes, I, I do love my mom. She's been incredible to watch and she's helped me and kind of backed me throughout this whole process, which I, when I first moved to LA when I was 17, a lot of, a lot of naysayers, a lot of people were like, oh, that's the best idea. Um, and she was always on my side, so I would say that's a great little model. But a close second is Dave Grohl. Got to meet Dave Grohl. Some of you know him from Nirvana, some of you know him from Foo Fighters. Um, he, he, was an, he was an incredible person to just get to know. Um, so he brought his daughter to one of the shows. She was a big fan, so he brought her there. We all wanted to take a picture. He said, nope, 
It's my daughter's thing. I'm not going to get in the way of that. She just focus on her. And I thought that was so cool. And so years later, we went to the Elton John Oscar party. See, it's all coming out. <laughs> to that party, so I, I was there and I saw him from across the way, he was with his wife, and uh, I was like, oh, man, I want to go say something, but I didn't want to obviously bother Dave Grohl. Uh, and I kept on looking over and I noticed that he's there just looking at me. <laughs> I'm like, there's no way that he re remembers me, there's no way. Um, so I had, I had a couple drinks and I was about to third, so I finally was like, okay, I'm gonna go up, I'm gonna say something, and right when I walked up, he was... He said, oh, me and my wife were wondering when you were going to come over here. So, <laughs> and I just thought, how cool is that? And we chatted about music and about tour and all, and, and him recording in the studio and, and using, um, you know, actual tape and all, all sorts of stuff. It was just a really cool experience. There's no reason that a rock legend needs to remember who I am, but he was uh, kind enough to do that. And so that'll always live in my head for free. <laughs> That's your Roman Empire. <laughs> so out of all this, I know you mentioned Snoop Dogg, obviously he was on the show. Yes, he was. And so out of all the special guests that appeared on Big Time Rush, who do you think was your favorite to work with? Kendall! Yes. <laughs> Snoop Dogg is, uh, is, is the favorite. He really is. We, I think we spent the most time out of any of the guest stars with Russ him. And, and, uh, <laughs> we hung out after we got done with the episode, me and Kendall and Steven. And uh, it, it was just... It's a really, really special experience. He had taken a photo in his album, and he puts tons, tons of actors and artists and all sorts of people in this photo book that he has. And he said, oh, my daughter thinks that I'm a hero because of this episode. <laughs> so he said, thank you for doing that. I was like, thank you. <laughs> so he took, he took a little Polaroid of, of all three of us because we stayed, stayed later, and uh, um, I got to freestyle a little bit. Nice. Oh, we talked we talk shop, we talked about some of his new music. He had a song with Willie Nelson at the time called yeah. Superman. Yeah. Uh, it was just really cool. It was, it was a cool one. Yeah. Use some bars right now. I'm just nah, not going to do it. So I kind of going back to the, the side of your life where you're getting advice from people, things like that. Was there a singular piece of advice, other than Elton John's, that has really stood out to you in terms of balancing maybe a personal life, a professional life, making sure that that you're still happy. Is there, any, is there any advice from that lens that you would offer, that maybe you received, or maybe you would offer to other people, especially as we're graduating college, we're, yeah, we're going yeah. on to careers, right? Make sure that we're still happy. Well, I never went to college, so you got that part. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, I would say that one of the biggest things, and I think it's kept me from releasing music whenever I was younger, it's kept me from getting to know people better whenever I was younger, was that I think there's that kind of cloud that comes with trying to achieve something that you've never achieved before, or doing something outside of your scope, um, it's, it's failing, that's part of it. And I wish I would've told my yourself, hey, it's okay, fail, in fact, do it, fake. Um, because I think it's the single most important thing for growth. And um, uh, yeah, I would say that, fail, because it's okay, you know? Get back up, there you go. You're hired. Wow. <laughs> so kind of talking a little bit more about your career too, um, what do you think is maybe the biggest difference between someone who begins their career on TV and then kind of transitions into a musical career versus someone else, like maybe the Jonas Brothers for example, whose career kind of took the opposite approach, right? They started in music and then moved into other forms of media. Yeah, uh, well, I feel like that they were shopping their show for, since they were young, so I, maybe that they probably still kind of had that same thing, but I think it's I think it's kind of tough. I mean, it's weird to be on a show that's kind of you know in the very beginning episode is made out to not really knowing what we were doing, and so it was kind of following our actual lives, which is which was nice. I mean, this, the story is created, and it's we are very much playing characters. But I think within trying to learn and, and be in the studio and develop your craft as a songwriter and also as an actor. I mean, you're putting it on display, and it's it's a very odd thing. And after you know, 74 episodes, you kind of get the hang of things. You kind of, kind of, you know, make that connection. But I think in the very beginning, it's hard. You kind of feel like, am I just putting this on, like, just a, kind of a pretend game? But I think it's kind of what they say in showbiz they make it. Type thing. <laughs> um, and and you know, we worked our we worked our asses off to. 
to get better at what we were doing. So I think that was that was the biggest thing. You and me, baby. <laughs> so another question, kind of speaking about some of the roles that you play within the show, you know, out of the four members of the Big Time Rush gang, you know, you were kind of written, I think, dubbed as being like the smart one yes. of the group. Wow. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, the creator of the show is always because he's like, you're a smart elf. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> Do you think the portrayal of your character on the show, and maybe even the other members of, of the group as well, does that accurately describe the group that kind of keep real life being the smart one of the four? <laughs> Uh, like I said, it probably leans a little closer to smart ass, but uh, <laughs> no, I think I, I think classically everybody said that I'm probably the least like my character. Um, <laughs> but we all have things that that carry over. I think some of the humor you can't really take that out. That's still very much the four of us. But um, yeah, there are moments, of course, that I, I even look at James. I go, Wow, you are just like your character. <laughs> Something or we'll, we'll start a song and we I don't know we're just so self-deprecating so we we have, a, we have a good time with it. Sometimes it'll pop up and it'll be in front of people who are like, well Logan you know what to do right because you did science or chemistry and I'm like no I did this is so stupid. But uh, yeah. Um, so in 2008 you had a small role on Friday Night Lights. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I, yes, I do. In <laughs> movie theater, yep. Teenage boy number two? Yep. That's it. <laughs> what happened, man? What, what happened to teenage boy number one? Well, you know <laughs> what? When I first went in, they were like, I, it was, I was young, and so I forgot the person, it was uh, Smash, right? Is that Yes. Cool. Just <laughs> agree and smile is. and nod. Okay, great, yeah. Uh, so that was the character there, and they were like, you're too young for this role, but we love what, what you're doing. So they wanted me to be included. It wasn't even a part. Um, and so they, they let me go along with the person who was much older and bigger than me as, as the bully. And so I was kind of like, you know, a little person along with that. But Friday Night is possibly one of my favorite shows. So I was, it was a cool moment. And that was the first acting role that made me think, oh, I think I could probably do this for a living. So, yeah. It all worked out. Yeah. yeah. It all worked out. Teenage boy number two. That's right. <laughs> also, while I was surfing around IMDb, looking oh, yeah, <laughs> for some deep cuts, um, it says on there that one of your nicknames is Batman. <laughs> Do you have any idea where that comes from? Is there any context? Told me Batman. I think it's, it's, like, it's a great superhero. I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't think you guys called me that. Maybe after tonight. Maybe after tonight. Yeah, so, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so, so I feel like this is a good segue for a song right now. I'm a sleepwalker. So even in Dallas, growing up um, in Texas, I was start, starting bands from a young age, and I think even before we even knew kind of what we needed to do with music, we were already forming bands and forming band names and coming up with lyrics and stuff like that. So I always kind of kept a diary since I was young and, and kind of juggled different, different groups. Um, so writing has always kind of just been inherent. I've always kept journals and wanted, wanted to do that for a long time. So I think it was just kind of like a, a necessary thing for me to really stand on my own two feet and see what I could do, what I could come up with. And I think doing the group is a whole different, it's a whole different ball game. 
um, and we are kind of moving in a direction that's definitely much more free than than our last albums and, and continually trying to stay curious in the studio and, and with life in general. And I just, I thought there were some things that I needed to get off my chest. It was kind of therapeutic for me. And there were these stories I had and things that I went through that I didn't feel comfortable releasing in that format. And so the solo project was just kind of came at a, out of necessity of, of needing to kind of release this music and release these songs. And, and also, yeah, exploring and seeing seeing what I could do, um, and and so I'm still I'm still doing it. I'm still writing. I've, I've spent, obviously spent the greater half of the last two years uh, writing for Good Time Rush, and uh, trying to come up with an album that you know we were proud of. But uh, I've got a lot of unreleased music and stuff that I still have, have to say, and so I'm, I'll be excited to to release music pretty soon. <laughs> when you're creating new music? Um, a lot of life, I think it's, uh, some people will stay in the studio. I like being in the studio, but I really like to go in when I feel like I have something to say. Um, so there will be times that I, I take a couple weeks off and then it'll kind of just rain you know, maybe two sessions a day or hit a session every single day that week. But uh, your creative process is always a little bit different. I get, a, I get inspiration from anything. It's meeting new people, like I said, life in general. Um, other good music, I think, uh, movies, I've found out that I, I've watched a lot of movies and there'll be character lines or stuff that I see that I really love, something that feels really meaningful and then, um, yeah, I'll find a melody to kind of go along with it or it's a feeling or an intention that I have and I'll get in the studio and, I mean, I'm, I'm classic, the most annoying person where I'm just with my phone all day recording melodies and, and writing lyrics in my phone, so I do that, um, all day, every day. Yeah, so that's it. Sometimes it starts from there. Sometimes you get in the studio, you don't have an idea at all. It'll start with bass line. It'll start with some percussion. It'll start with I don't know. You can open the studio one time. I think for brand new or it was something else for song we were working on, and uh, he had gotten something from the grocery store. And it was a rubber band tied around. It had a nice little tone. He goes, "Hey, we start with rubber band." Like, this is so <laughs> oh, we did. We put, we put that in the track, and that kind of was the very first starting point for some of these songs. Are it's so. Just come out of nowhere. Um, so yeah, and I mentioned you're watching some movies. Yes. What are, what's what, what are you watching these days? <laughs> what's on Netflix that really has your attention? You know, I feel like I need to come clean about this because it's, it's been for like 115 seasons. I still watch Survivor. I still feel like it's a show. That's what I'm uh, What I just watched? Is it something called High Fidelity? Was that one? That was pretty jarring. I'm watching The Changeling also. Kind of jarring. Uh, I don't know what what else have I watched. <laughs> House of Dragon. That was great. I feel like I'm waiting for all these next uh, these next shows. Like they, because right during COVID they shut off, so you get the first season, then you have to wait like three or four years. I'm like, I don't want to play that game. <laughs> like, let's. I like, need to know that one to two years max is how long we can wait. Like. So, yeah, I'm, I'm watching everything. I try to watch a little bit of everything. Oh, what are you most excited for to come out? What are you really waiting on? Uh, what's the one with Adam Scott? Is Severance it? season two! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's my girl. That's our, yeah, Severance is amazing, right? And he does such a good job in it. So I'm waiting for it, yeah. Season two. Oh, <laughs> Exactly. We did, I know. Going back to some of the, the songs that you've written, part of your solo career, all these things. Yeah. Out of all the songs you've made, and you've made some bangers already. Thank you. Absolutely. Woo! Can you do a favorite one that you've, you've made so far? And maybe why? Um, I was somebody asked me this the other day. I don't know. I kind of fall in love with the songs at different times. I think they, like, I'll really be in love with one song for a minute. And it'll carry over to something else, and I'll be obsessed with that and listen to it a thousand times. Um, to answer your question, I, End of the World was one that I always loved. That was. Uh, <laughs> and so I, I really enjoyed that one. Um, uh, our new album that we, that we just made, uh, brand new, I think was. Oh, I, really <laughs> uh, I love every single song on that album. Really, it was, it was a tough one to, to come up with because there were so many songs that we were just getting out. But I love every single song on that album. Yeah, I love that one. So. I wasn't about to yeah, say it. Have y'all heard the new album? Yeah. Yeah. Also, how many people have seen us on 
tour. Uh, but we'd love to see we'd love to see you on tour. I know we just got done with two years of touring, but we'll, we can't we'll get enough of it. You might hear anything in the jingle balls? a huge foodie, so a chef would be nice. <laughs> Travel around, eating amazing food. It's yeah. trips to Italy. Um, I don't know, I have my sailing license. I could just be one of those... What? One of those people who sails, sails, the, sails around. So you Carlos. Yeah. You want a boat? No, I don't want a boat. No, I'm still nice. I'm still yes, I can sail one. You can join Carlos. I will happily drive your boat. If I had a boat, it'd be Maybe that's all yours. We both, both invest in a boat. I was going to say, is this an investment opportunity? It could be useful. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, it's like Step Brothers. Boats. <laughs> Your wife is like, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Yeah. I have permission now. So go ahead. So I want to go back to the beginning. Your entire career, right? You're, you're 17, you're Chuck 18, you're, you're starting to get roles, you want to get into the entertainment business. Yeah. When did you know that you really wanted to go into this line of work? Um, I, really, I grew up doing stage performance and always really loved it and still do, but there was a little piece that was missing and then whenever I found a place that taught um, acting for film, I thought, yeah, this is it. Um, then I wasn't just that weird kid watching movies and reciting every line as I was doing. <laughs> I was like, oh, I can, I can use these powers for good. Uh, so, yeah, I think after I really buckled out and studied and, and really started to learn the craft of, of film, I thought, yeah, I want to do this. Um, and at 17, I, I just wasn't waiting. Uh, there was a period of time where I was like, what am I going to do? And I was like, I'm going out to LA. I just, there was no plan B, um, which for some is stupid, but for me, it's just there, there was not, I could not see it any other way. So, yeah. So I went, luckily, something happened. Sometimes a lack of a plan B can inspire you to kind of swing above your weight sometimes, right? You Absolutely. don't have a safety net, there's nothing there. Yeah, and it, you have to, I work really, really hard. I know this beginning audition process, I was still getting classically trained um, for music. And so I would, it was like an hour away, so drive an hour to Santa Monica, an hour of voice host, an hour back. It's like, it eats up your days so much, especially to sink in the middle. Um, but I went every single day until I knew where I was going. Um, and I, the same, same with acting for film. I went every single day. I could have slept there. I just didn't get a sleeping bag. I literally could have slept there because I just became super obsessed with it. And I, I think that's kind of how a lot of these things work for me, which may not be healthy all the time. But I do obsess over the things until it just becomes second nature. So when people are on tour, right, you're on tour with Big Time Rush, everyone sees when you're on stage, they see you for this, this brief period of time, though. They don't always see what goes on behind the scenes, the, right. the travel, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Do you have one particular example or story in mind of like what's the craziest thing that has happened to you guys, or even you individually, when you're on the road and you're traveling these places? Any crazy interactions? Any crazy things happen to you? Uh, <laughs> it's not <the> customs. <laughs> yeah. Besides that, uh, I don't know if we've had any like crazy travel stories. When we did South America years ago, we did like 16 shows in 14 days or something. And uh, there's we could never complain about touring. I mean, it really is the best job in the world. But if we were. <laughs> uh, that, that was just really tough. It's lack of sleep, being on different time zones, being away from your family, all those things come into play. But I think, well, whatever you step on stage, that immediately goes out the window. You see how excited everybody is, how happy everybody is, how involved everybody is. Um, 
that's it, that's the best part. So that's what keeps you going on the, the long, long days and nights on the road. So I know we talked, actually before we even came out here, we were talking, you know, sports, we were talking about stadiums, all these things. I know you were recently at SoFi Stadium to see the Los Angeles Rams play. Yeah, yeah, that was fun. Are you a Rams fan? I know you're from Texas. Do you, who do you root for? Uh, for the sake of the game, I am a Rams fan. I mean, it's hard. It I grew up in Texas. Cowboys, I mean, it's just, there's sometimes there's no way. Um, you know what? That was a great game. It was, so yeah, it was it was super fun to go. I watched probably more hockey than anything, and I first started getting into hockey whenever I moved to LA. So you know, Kings is my team, but I also live in Vegas, Golden Knights. I go watch every now and again. But yeah, I'm always down for a sports game. Okay. Uh, yeah, these Warriors. <laughs> yeah. Warriors out there. Woo -hoo. Yeah. Cool. Homecoming this Saturday. Yeah. Here we go. You're still in town. Maybe I'll just stay. <laughs> Just so obviously, lots of really cool venues that you've seen now, not only as a sports fan, but as a performer. Is yeah. there one venue that you have loved above all else? And then secondly, I'll ask you, is there a venue that you haven't been to, or a country you haven't played in, that you really want to, you want to go visit sometime? Well, at SoFi, we played the YouTube theater, so that's attached directly to it. Uh, at some point, I gotta get in there for the SoFi say. I don't know what we'd be doing, but you can sing. Yeah. The National Anthem? Yeah. Yeah. Detroit Garden was probably one of the coolest. Um, again, another bucket list, bucket list uh, part. The mecca of it was of the history, and, and uh, we we sold it out, so we got these really cool uh, silver silver little plaques from Tiffany. So that was sell it at the Garden. He a VIP. There you come. There you go. A classic part of something coming to fruition if you put it out in the universe, because we wrote that we wrote that line uh, in a song called Fall. And it was, uh, yeah, Sound of the Garden, Chief VIP. And uh, they told us that we were gonna go to do the garden, so I was like, you know what? This is sick to let me get a little like, this is probably some good, some good juju to put out there. So. <laughs> <laughs> but that was it. We've already talked about some future collaborations already, too. I know someone shouted out Taylor Swift, that would be awesome. <laughs> we talked about the anthem and so on. What are some future projects that you would love to work on? I couldn't get over the strike, which I'm confident, and um, things have gone well so far, which has been amazing. I mean, uh, I'm really now focused on uh, reading scripts and uh, doing that, so I think acting will be the next thing that I really focus on. Um, so yeah, I have that. obviously have so much music that I still need to release, so I'm gonna be in the studio again. Um, anything and everything, I don't know, we, we have a, a ship to sell. <laughs> uh, you might have time for your acting career. You know, oh, it's all right. Maybe Spurgeon and just go around the whole. We film in Dickinson then, I think. I think <laughs> Castaway. <laughs> Returns. <laughs> yeah, I know. Just thought of it. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I'm just. I need to know what that one looks like. That's right. Went around the boat rocking. Right. <laughs> Just float them in. Yeah, think about that. I love it. Yeah. Is there a genre of TV that you really want to, or movie, maybe it's movies, is there a certain area that you really want to go into? I know you mentioned crap shows, that kind of yeah. thing a little bit. Um, I think a good thriller would be a lot of fun. Yes. Really, really into thrillers. Yes. Um, I would love that. A good action movie, I mean, something with a little bit of comedy. I want to do it all. Yeah. 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 For me, if the script is great, that's all that matters. Do you have a joke? No. Do a joke. Do a cartwheel. Do a cartwheel. Do a backflip. Do a backflip. Do a backflip. These boots were not made for that. I'm not going to search though. This looks like a strong... Backflip. Got you. Yeah. You know, obviously I know we're in the middle of a strike too, a writer's strike, so there's not a lot of content, and we mentioned that a little bit with the, yeah. the scripts, those sorts of things. Yeah, yeah. If there was one thing that you could change in the music or acting industry, what well, what's the change that you would like to see, maybe even as a result of the, the strike being concluded? Well, I think, uh, yeah, obviously I think things should be a little bit more fair. I mean, it's, it's just, that whole thing was just insane. I will also say, before we get too far down that rabbit hole, that I think the development of artists is such a huge thing, and there's just not a whole lot of it, especially in the music industry. So I think for people to kind of 
help and focus more on the development of, of great artists um, would really help a lot of people out. There's so many amazing musicians and actors and artists I know that don't ever see the light of day because it's so tough. Um, so I think that's something actually I would like to do. That might lead to something, some type of you know, management or something that can help with the development of artists would be really cool, 100%. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting the signal. I don't even have a good segue for this. Okay. Yeah? Are there some audience questions? Do we want audience questions? Yeah, we'll take audience questions. Not a single question, did we cover all? Oh, oh my God. God. Yeah, is it okay? Sure. Yeah, I think that's you because I can see you. You're closest to George. Oh. I have a question over oh. here. Oh. Sorry. I don't even know where we're at. Um, over here. Sorry. Wait. Show yourself. <laughs> now I can finally see you. Sorry, these lights are so bright. What's your name? Eva. Eva. Oh, I like that. Eva. Gorgeous. That's good. What is your favorite episode of Big Time Rush and why? Yes! Yes! This is a tough question for me, and before the audience turns on me, me. I'm just going to come out and say I have not seen that many episodes of Big Time Rush. What? I know. I know. I know. Uh, I've probably seen three or four. Uh, but I did see Big Time Movie, and that will always go down. So, good time movie, does that count? Yes! Tell oh. Netflix not to take it off. It's oh. leaving Netflix November 1st. Tell them not to take it off. Oh, okay, I'll call them. <laughs> <laughs> I'll call them. Oh, yeah, also, we had one over here just for the next because I already called and I feel so bad. So, I'm going to get to you. Yeah, yeah. Hi. Hi. Um, you mentioned earlier that you listened to Abba growing up. What's your favorite song? Um, oh, wow. Queen. 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 No, that one's a great one. Um, I don't know. My, my, my sister listens to Abra religiously. So I get to hear a lot of them. So you just kind of go through the whole catalog. I went to the, the Abba experience in London. That was uh, very, very interesting. It was very cool. Um, so if you have a chance, you should go see it. Are you a big Abba fan? Yeah? We're bigger Big Time Rush fan, obviously. Okay. <laughs> you said it. That's the right answer. Yeah, there you go. That's awesome. <laughs> you, you just, maybe you just yell yours out real quick, because yeah. we'll do this again. Um, I was just going to ask what motivates you the most to keep going. Um, <laughs> this is a good question. Just hit it. Deep question now. <laughs> Okay. Advice, yeah, right? motivation. Um, I don't know if I've ever had so, had a hard time with getting motivated. Um, I think it's sometimes the things surrounding it kind of make it tough. But um, I don't know. I think any time that you can find your fire, any time that you have someone that keeps you grounded uh, or keeps you motivated, keeps you encouraged, I think. Um, if those are always good people to have around, so having friends and a support system really helps. Um, I think it's much easier to stay motivated whenever you're mentally clear. Um, so working out, like that's always something that really kind of allows me to flourish whenever I'm in the studio and stuff like that. And I don't know if, if you if you, if you sing, I'm sure you have an amazing voice. Let people hear it. If not right now. You don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> hey, was a turn. Hey, there we go. I, just, I, I love it. I feel like if you can sing, like, yeah, the people have to hear you. So, yeah, absolutely. That's a good question. Sorry. Hi, right here. Hey. Um, I was just wondering if you knew um, the creative decision behind setting your characters in Minnesota. And also, thank you for not having it set in Wisconsin. <laughs> <laughs> You know what? The creator is a very strange guy. <laughs> I think he just thought it was the back and forth of moving to Los Angeles, 
in having a super small town in Minnesota was one of those things that just kind of makes it the story. It makes it even that much more uh, special that we have kind of broken the barrier of leaving a small town. It's classic, and I think you just thought it'd be fun to have four hockey players. Yeah, he's a, he's a strange guy. Love him. <laughs> but, and, and the character work, we had juggled around with different characters for us, and I think that is just something that kind of went along as we were getting to know each other, and because um, he also did Ned's Classified. So, and he's done, he's done countless other cartoons and TV shows and all sorts of stuff. So I think his mind was just coming up with things. Yeah. I don't know how to ask him now. Hi. Um, Hi. I just wanted to know where Gustavo is. <laughs> And say it again. I'm, I'm, I'm here with a, a very large audience. <laughs> Well, we love you, and I'll talk to you very soon. I just wanted to call and say hello. Now that we're thinking about you.
Can you get those lights up real quick? Just over here so I can take a picture.